Hey, welcome back. In this video, we will learn about variables and data types. So before we get started, if you'd like to code along with me, then head over to this website, REPL.it. This website basically allows us to write and execute code within the browser. So once you're here, click on start coding, and then you, it will ask you to pick a language. So just pick Node.js and do create REPL. This will create a new REPL for you. And here basically it will create this index.js file and you can type something in here and hit run to actually see the results over here. In this case, obviously it will throw an error since basically this is just gibberish. So I already created a REPL uh, previously, so I'm gonna access that. So this is the REPL that I created. And for now, we're gonna start using this. So if you're coming from any other programming language, I'm sure you're already familiar with variables. So variables allow us to store some kind of information that can be used or updated at a later time. So that information can either be, let's say, a number or a text or some any other value. So let's see how we can create a variable. So to create a variable, we can use the keyword, which is a JavaScript keyword called var, and then we have to assign a name to a variable. So I can, in this case, let's say if I'm creating a variable for a number, I can do var num and do equals 10. So basically what I did is created a new variable called num and assign it a value 10. And if I hit run, you won't really see anything here. So what we just did is we executed this line, but we don't really see anything in this case. So to see something, what we have to do is actually print this out. So I will do console.log and then do num. And if I hit run now, I can actually see 10 being printed over here. So if you want to print anything in JavaScript, you would be using console.log. And then within the brackets, you will actually pass in any data that you want. So for example, I can do console.log and I can print um, anything. For example, I can print hello. And if I hit run, there you go. I just printed hello over here. So this way we can actually print out whatever we want. In most cases, you will be printing out some kind of a variable or some other information. So let me delete this over here. Now let's create another variable. This time, instead of assigning a number, let's assign a text. So I will do variable name equals, let's say Jane. So one thing to keep in mind, this time when I created a variable, I assigned this quotation marks over here. If I zoom in. So I added this quotation mark because this is necessary when you're creating a text. So in JavaScript, when you're adding a text, you have to add in this quotation, but this can be the single quotation or it can be a double quotation. For example, I can replace this with double, even this will work. So either use single or double, whichever works with you. Now, if I print this out, let's say print name, hit run. Okay, this time you can see that it's being printed out Jane over here. And they also actually uh, are highlighting this. So they're showing in red number and white, they're showing the text. Awesome. So with variable, you have to keep in mind that when you're creating an assigning a name to a variable, make sure you're not using an existing JavaScript keyword. For example, you shouldn't be doing var and already using an existing keyword called var again, because this is already being used by JavaScript. So you shouldn't be using that. For example, if I do this and assign, let's say uh, test, and if I try to run this, it will throw me an error saying the unexpected token var. So we shouldn't be using something like this. So I'm going to delete this over here. Okay. So now you know how to create a variable. We can basically keep assigning different kind of values to store information here, whether that's a text or whether that's a number. Now let's talk about data types. So for data types, let me add that over here. So JavaScript has different data types. So JavaScript variables can hold many data types such as numbers, string, objects, and many more. So in programming, data types are really important concept. So it's good for you to know what different types of data types are and how to use them. So let's take a look at them. We actually already looked at two of them, which is number and string. So let's start with that. So we'll start with number. I'm going to type in number. So to use a number, just the way we did over here, we can do var age and then assign a number, let's say 50. So one thing to keep in mind when you're creating a variable, do not add in a quotation mark because when you do that, it becomes a string or it becomes a text. So we create a variable without assigning any quotation marks. So this way you have a variable created. We can create, let's say, another one. I can do variable age 2. And this time I can assign the age 30. And we can kind of also do a sum of this variable. I can do variable age sum equals age plus age 2. Now if I print this out, let's say if I do console.log age sum, 
Now let's run this. Okay, there you go. So it ran and it says, uh, give us the overall calculation of H and H2. So that is 80, 50 plus 30. Awesome. We can change this to, let's say, minus H minus H2, and this will print 20. So that works too. So with number data type, obviously, like I used plus and minus, we have different types of operators that we can use. So for those operators, we have, let's say, we just looked at plus. We actually, let me fix this. We looked at plus, we looked at minus, we also have division, and we also have something called modulo. So let's look at them. So division is straightforward. You divide this by this. If I run this, we can see 1.6 being printed. And what modulo does is, which is this percentage sign over here, if I run this, it actually gives me the remainder of that uh, value. So for example, it divided age um, by h2. So what it's doing is 30 divided by 50. So in this case, the remainder is 20. So it actually printed that out. And if I, let's say, change this to 60 and run this, in this case, it will be zero because there is no remainder. So these are the different operators that we can use for numbers. Now let's take a look at our next data type, which is text and also known as strings in programming. So I'm gonna add that here, string text. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, we actually use that over here as a string. So if I do, let's say create a new sentence, I'll create a variable, name it sentence, and then if I do, uh, let's say, hello, my name is Bugs Bunny. Okay, and I can actually print this out. Also, the log sentence. If I run this, there you go, it just printed out, hello, my name is Bugs Bunny. I can create another sentence. Do sentence two. And in this case, let's say if I add in, I am 10 years old. And if I print that out, actually, let's do something. Let's do sentence plus sentence two. So we can actually concatenate sentences, basically add in two sentences together. If I run this, you'll see, hello, my name is Bugs Bunny. I'm 10 years old. If you notice, there is no space here. We can actually add that over here or even better, we can add that here. So we'll do plus and then add in a space here. If I run this, there you go. It says, hello, my name is Bugs Bunny. I'm 10 years old. Awesome. So strings, just like number, are really straightforward. One thing to keep in mind, when you're using quotation marks over here, you cannot basically add in a quotation in the middle. For example, if you want to add in a quotation after years, and if you just run this, this will throw you an error because it what it just did is it created a string just this much. And after that, it basically didn't even know what we did after that because our string or our line ended over here and anything after that it didn't recognize or the javascript didn't rec recognize so to fix that what we should be using is called escape characters and escape characters are basically backslash if i do this what this will do is it will ignore what's next basically anything after the escape sign it will ignore so it will ignore this quotation mark and it will consider it as part of that string so if i run this there you go. So we just did hello, my name is Bugs Bunny and I'm 10 years old with the quotation mark over here. Something to keep in mind uh, when you're working with strings that if you need to use something which is part of quotation mark, you do it this way. All right, now let's move on to our next data type. The next one we'll be working with is called a Boolean. So what Boolean is, is basically true and false value. So I'm gonna add that here, true or false. So in many cases, you will be using some condition where you need to know whether something is true or whether something is false. So let's see if I want to do, if I create a fruit called, let's say fruit one, I create, name this apple. I create another fruit, I name this banana, then create, oops, create another one. And this one, I'm going to name it apple again. Now let's see if I want to compare whether fruit one equals to fruit three or fruit one equals to fruit true. That will return in a boolean value which is true or false. So let's test it out. So I'm going to do console.log. I'll do fruit one. And to actually check whether something is equal to another, we can do it double equal. And I will do fruit two. So the reason we're using double equal because when we do single equal, which we have been using here, it's to assign a value. So that's why to actually compare something, we use double equal. Okay, so we did fruit one equals fruit two, and then we're gonna do another one, which is fruit one equals fruit three. Now, if I run this, 
there you go the first one which is fruit one equals fruit two it returned false which is obviously the right condition fruit one is not equal to fruit two or apple is not equal to banana but for the other one which is apple is equal fruit one is equal to fruit three which is both apple it returned true so you can also assign true or false value directly to variables for example if i do allowed to drive i can directly assign a true value here and i can do the same thing uh, let's say allowed to drink i can assign a false value here okay now if i let's say run this i want to print this out i will do console.log allowed to drive or allowed to drink in this case let's say there you go it says that's false which is true but if i do allowed to drive if i run that that's printing true so either you can do a comparison which will return into true or false value or you can directly assign true or false value to a variable and we will look into booleans and comparison a little a bit more in the upcoming videos now let's move on to our next data type 